my name is Keith Moses. I'm coming to you from Crescent Valley High School, and today we're going to be making glass pendants, and we're going to do the teardrop technique, where we pull a little spout off the top and connect it back. And so this is with borosilicate glass, um, COE3030, and uh, we're going to use uh, some 11 mil and some 7 mil, and pull the pendant out of that. We'll begin with our safety glasses. We're going to be using a um, uh, shade 5 and shade 3 uh, welder's lens over didymium uh, goggles and so real bright light we have that spectrum of uh, intense bright white light that we want to cover and then this will allow us, the didymium will allow us to see color if we worked with that. And so we're working with natural gas today and oxygen and so a few uh, pointers about the torch. I'm going to put these glasses on and I'll talk about it. Our system is all charged. I've given it a little wake up to feel the tension of the valves. And one of the rules that we have when we start off with gas and working with a torch is that we light the gas and we add oxygen. And when we turn it off, we turn off the oxygen and the gas. If you go the other way around, uh, you end up with a pop. Um, so the acronym POOP. <laughs> propane, oxygen, oxygen, propane to help you remember that. And so, I'm going to use a striker here, and I just turn on gas just enough to ignite it. I want kind of a long flame, and then I'm going to bring oxygen into it. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little cone in there, about a centimeter. And that's a good, almost, uh, it's not quite a neutral, but we're getting to a, a reducing flame right there um, at that point. And that little point will be our hottest part, and out here, they can do a lot of our warmer work with it. So to begin with, I'm going to take my smaller rod here and I'm going to prepare a tool. I've set up a cold side and a hot side. And so I'm going to take this tool, cross it over. This is a, a maver, and it's what we call a marble maver. It's got the rounded areas to do half circles. And it's basically a piece of graphite. Um, you can see here I can write with it, and so a giant pencil. So back to making this. I'm going to prepare a punty with a small glass. Start out here and I'm going to slowly anneal it in this cooler bushy flame and just rotating it so it can do 180 and get both sides. And as it gets closer it gets more intense, the light, and now I'm right at that cone. It's warm. I'm going to roll it into a little bit of a point. The punty is our tool. We use this to connect in two forms, a hot seal or cold seal to our glass. We can use it to pull and situate our glass. This thicker glass is going to be our teardrop, and this is going to be the object. And so I'm going to start the same way, coming out here and slowly heating it up. And my hand rotation is giving it a 180, so I can flip it to both sides and essentially cover all surfaces with this. I'm heating about the top centimeter and a half of the glass and I'm going to get it molten and as it wants to start to drop I'm going to go ahead and do what we call a gathering hold. I'm going to angle it and keep it from uh, pouring over on itself and essentially almost slumping up and keeping a common diameter. So now that I've got it soft I want to avoid overheating it and getting uh, carbon or air trapped in there, bubbles. and so. I'm working it down to about two centimeters right now. And I'm going to take this and mash it. And I'll mash both sides. And as I do this, little compression rings will form, kind of like on water when you throw a stone in. It looks like a thumbprint on there. I'm going to come back and I'll flame burnish that. And so the heat takes away those little marks, those little mar, mar marks there. And those are gone now. Um, I can share this with somebody by handing the the far end, the cold end. I'm going to take a look at it. And uh, continue my work. Okay, so keeping this a little bit warm out here, I'm going to come in with my punty now, and I'm going to get it warm. It's going to be what we call a cold seal. One item, my item I'm working on is going to be colder than my punty, which is white hot. I touch it to the tip of it, I push and pull, and I line it up so that it's uniform. You can also do what we call a drop on it so that it lines up in line. 
The nice thing about a cold seal um, like this where one item is colder and one item is hotter is that it breaks off and it's nice and clean. And so to do that again, I'll need to prepare the punty. Keep my object a little bit warm. Roll that punty into a point, and I use about a 30 degree angle on that. So keeping this warm, not cold, I don't want it to crack. I'm going to get my punty hotter than my object. And the reason we want our punties hotter than our object is so that it doesn't mar the object. We want the punty to conform to the object on a cold seal. A hot seal is when both objects are the same temperature and you can't break and snap and release it. This we want it to be able to release. So we've got it attached. Now I'm going to come in and pull the loop, the holder for the teardrop. And so rotating this and gradually bringing the heat in, I want to avoid getting heat around that seal. And so as it goes in, it'll start to get soft. You can see this bend. And now I'm bringing it right up near that flame, and you can see it get quite hot. At this point, I could take it, stretch it, and bring it over on itself. And this is what we call a flame cut. I'm going to put it right in there by that little point and cut it. If I want to, I could straighten things up, articulate it. And I'm going to flame burnish that so there's no edges. We don't want any stringers. Gather this up. Keep that warm. And we're almost done. Take this, put it aside, take our cold seal here, pop that off, and then we can take our tweezers and we'll flame burnish where the punty was. We'll clean it up. And that's clean. We put it back. The next step is annealing. Annealing is an important step because what it does is it allows the outside and the inside of a glass object to cool together. If we just let this cool here on the table, what happens is the outside cools too fast and the molten expanded inside um, stays larger and you create micro fissures, which lead to problems later on. Your pieces could crack. First, I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to turn off the oxygen, then the gas. All right. So we'll take our piece and we drop it into the kiln and then we close it up. The annealing kiln takes about uh, somewhere between four to five hours of slow cooling and then it can start dropping. When I say slow cooling, the kiln's going to be at about 1300 degrees and then it'll incrementally cool down to around 700 degrees over a four to eight hour period depending on the piece. At that point, then it will naturally cool down. We basically leave it in there for a day and take it out the next day. Um, what this does, it allows the inside and the outside of the piece to cool together so that there's not an expansion difference and a rapid cooling on the external part of the piece. It's very important for pieces that have uh, differences in mass where there's thin pieces and thick pieces. And it's very important when we have different color clays, or, or excuse me, different color glass together and different pieces of glass mixed in together. Um, it helps with those bonds. And you would want to purchase glass that you know is annealed. Um, often a lot of artisans bypass this step because of the cost of a kiln and it's something that we want to kind of promote the safety of. This is the final step with it and when we're done with this we'll be able to wear the piece after it comes out of the kiln. So now you know the steps for making glass. Um, you know the safety procedures of turning on the propane first, then the oxygen. You know the procedures about making a punty, rolling a point, uh, using a hot seal and a cold seal. The cold seal allows you to break things off. You know about burnishing. And now you know about annealing glass um, and the reasons why we do it. Thank you. <laughs>